Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I do a lot of metal casting and it would be really useful for me to be able to scientifically test the tensile strength of the metals that I'm producing. So I could just order a tensile testing machine and pay somewhere around $8,000. $8,000? I want to do it for something around $50. There's got to be a way. Different metals have different tensile strengths, and it's usually rated in PSI. It's often a big number, like 50,000 PSI, and that's pounds per square inch. Let's say this was a 50,000 PSI sample, and this is one inch by one inch. So that's one square inch of cross-sectional area. In that case, it would take 50,000 pounds for me to break that. If the sample's round, you just, you know, you use your math, you use pi r squared, you calculate the cross-sectional area of the circle, and that's how much tension it should take to break that. In order to test metals, I need something that can really exert some force because uh, even a weak metal uh, has, has strengths in the many, many thousands PSI range. I have a 20-ton hydraulic press that I got from Harbor Freight for $150. wonder if I can use that somehow. First, I thought about using a load cell in combination with my press. Uh, a load cell is a device that will measure uh, compression and tension forces. But for one that's 20 ton, the same size as my press, was pretty expensive. Then I looked into adding a pressure gauge to my bottle jack. You can just use the PSI that it's exerting to calculate how much force. But that has the potential of ruining your bottle jack outright if you do it wrong, and also compromising its structural integrity because you're drilling into the casting. Then I thought I'd look for a bottle jack that already had a gauge on it. Yeah, here's one, $384. Uh, here's another one, $505. I think I might have found one for around 150 but that still seems silly. I already have a bottle jack. I just need a gauge. I knew this shouldn't be that hard. All I need to measure is PSI. I thought about, maybe I'll just machine a cylinder, machine a piston that fits in it, fill it with oil, and put a pressure gauge on it. And that's when I discovered this. This is called a short body ram, sold by Harbor Freight. I got this on eBay for $40, uh, and that's basically all it is. It's got a housing, which is has a, a cylinder board into it. It's got a piston that fits in it, and it's rated for 20 tons. And then I bought a pressure gauge for 20 bucks, put it on the side. That's a 10,000 PSI pressure gauge. So there you go. $60, I'm able to measure up to 20 tons in force. I put it on the press, right above the bottle jack. And now I can accurately calculate how much force this jack is exerting by doing some math off of that PSI. It turns out that 9,250 PSI on this gauge equals 20 tons or 40,000 pounds. So, excuse you. So um, I'm crushing something like this is the, the piece of aluminum that I cut off of my uh, AR-15 lower. And I want to see how much force it takes to crush it. It's giving. You see it yielding? Yeah, there it really crushed. So I got up around 2,000 PSI. The math here is pretty easy. I measured the cross-sectional area of the piston, which is 4.324 square inches, and that means 1 PSI will exert 4.324 pounds. So times 2,000, that's about 8,600 pounds that, that it took to crush that. Now, to really be able to make it useful, I want to be able to test tensile strength. When the press is going down, this is actually getting bigger right there. This is getting crushed, but this is opening up. So what that means is if I attach a sample in there and then on the other side at the same distance from center, I attach a, something that's overly strong that's not going to break, uh, I will then be exerting the force on the two things that I'm going to put in there. I don't really have an idea in my mind yet what they're going to be. But that means I can have a sample over here or up here or wherever that is my piece of test metal. For instance, a piece of metal that I've cast and then turned down to a known diameter so I know how many square inches it, it is. And I can test the tensile strength of my metals. That's going to be very useful when I'm building things that it's critical that they're strong enough. It'd be nice if I could pull it right in the middle on center line, but obviously the jack's in the way. I can't do that. So I'm going to have to rig something up so that I'm pulling on both sides equally and the weak point will be my sample. And then I can record the PSI it takes to break it. Now, of course, 
half of it will be held by either side. So if I went all the way up to 20 tons, it would be 10 tons on either side. I can make my samples the right size so that they're going to break before I hit the limits of this setup. Okay, I've cobbled something together. It's not the prettiest. This is an example of using what you've got. A friend of mine uh, gave me this stuff. Uh, this was a uh, conveyor belt, an industrial conveyor. So basically what you have here is some pins and a series of shackles. And it makes essentially a, a bunch of links that fit together. All right, so what I needed to do was get underneath this, but uh, I welded two of them together to make something that would go underneath that and allow me to pull up on that. And then just left these linked together, put it through the top, put a pin across, and I spaced one side so that they were the same length. So that's that side. Now on the other side, this side first. that's not removable. I welded a plate on the bottom to make it hold. But here's the here's the good part. Here's the trick. Top of this link is this. And this is a piece of 6061 aluminum. I turned it down to exactly a quarter inch and then drilled a couple holes in it to put some drill rod through. Now the drill rod's also quarter inch, but drill rod's a lot stronger than aluminum, so when I start pulling on this, it should break there. That's my weak link. So this is held in there like that uh, in, in between two of those shackles. So I measured very carefully. This one needs to be hard up against that. And this one I scribed a line. They need to be equal distance from the center so that I can divide the force in half and know how much it took to break my sample. If they weren't equal distance from the center, well then I have a lever action here and it, I, I could figure it out if I knew the distances how much force it took. But the easiest thing to do is this and then I can just divide in half. Pretty much ready to go here. Put a little bit of tension on those. Sure they're in the right spot. My one concern with this setup is that this bar here is not really uh, made to hold this much force. We'll see how it does. If I start bending it or anything, then I end up, I may end up having to reinforce that. All right, we are ready to break something. 6061 has 45,000 PSI tensile strength. So I have a quarter inch, so my diameter is 0.125 pi r squared, so square the radius times pi. That is the cross-sectional area of my sample. So that's how many square inches there are there. So if I multiply that by the 45,000 PSI, I get 2,208 pounds it should take to break that. Multiply that by two. I need to pull 4,417 pounds and this should break. So how does that equate to my, my PSI? 4417 pounds divided by 4.3 pounds per PSI, 1,021 PSI. Right there is the sample. And then the meter, the gauge should come, you know, half, this is 2,000 here. So it should come up just to halfway, somewhere in that range, and then it should break. Oh, it's climbing. Bingo. So there you can see it, it fractured right there. And uh, yeah, you can actually see it's a little bit tapered because it stretched before it broke. But, uh, but that worked great. Now I can actually test my castings. I can see what tensile strength I'm getting. And I'm kind of curious, I may do some testing on my aluminum can material, my bullet brass material, see how strong this stuff is. See how it compares to this 6061, which is what lowers are usually made out of. Cool, we have success.